Kitty Pride of the X-Men uses her phasing ability to walk through walls. But that's just in comic books and movies. In real life, it's impossible for an object to move through solid matter. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and my hand can't pass through this desk because the electrons in the atoms of my arm are repelled by the electrons in the atoms of the desk. According to classical physics, there's no getting around this. That's why it was pretty strange when in 1927, a scientist named Friedrich Huns noticed a phenomenon known as electron tunneling. Electron tunneling is when an electron moves or tunnels through a barrier that it shouldn't be able to penetrate. As you can imagine, it took a while for this phenomenon to become widely accepted. After all, according to a study done by the National Science Foundation in 2014, one in four Americans still believe that the sun revolves around the Earth. And Copernicus kind of settled this over 450 years ago. Anyway, even though electron tunneling was more than a little crazy, eventually a slew of scientists recognized that this was for real. And a couple even won Nobel Prizes for predicting when it would happen. Today, it's understood that this tunneling happens a lot, and it enables the nuclear reactions inside of stars. And recently, scientists figured out how to use nanotubes at ultra-low temperatures to induce tunneling. Now they don't have to wait around for it to occur naturally. They can kickstart the process. The reason this physically impossible feat is actually possible is because when you're dealing with something as small as atomic and subatomic particles, classical physics goes out the window and quantum mechanics takes over. In quantum mechanics, an electron doesn't exist in any single place or time with a single energy, but as a wave of probabilities. One of those probabilities places the particle on the other side of your barrier. This may be a very slim probability, but this is what allows electron tunneling to take place. This is very hard to explain and understand because the macroscopic things that human beings deal with on an everyday basis are representing one very clear, distinct state. This desk is not on fire. It's not both not on fire and on fire, it's just not on fire. Right now, physicists in Finland are trying to come up with a method that causes larger macroscopic objects to tunnel. Unfortunately, the largest thing they're trying to phase is a widget that's about a micrometer wide. That's a lot bigger than a subatomic particle, but nowhere near the size of a human being. The reason quantum mechanics doesn't apply to objects larger than an atom is because all those random probabilities start to balance each other out. Sure, there's a slim probability that one electron will hop through a wall, but the chances that all the particles that make up a human body will decide to jump through a wall at the same time are astronomically slim. Quantum calculations show that the universe will come to an end before all of a person's atoms align for a proper phasing. But we're talking about probabilities. Sure, it could take billions of years, but it could also be happening right now. Ow. Uh, let me know what superpower you want. Geister Furs 007 asks, how often do you start laughing when you're making your videos? The answer to that is, never. Soot DeGrill said on Twitter he'd really like to see an episode on real life supervillains. Um, and I think that's a really fun idea that I would like to do. Daffa asked for the superpower of uh, self-sustenance, uh, not having to sleep or eat, and I love that idea as a superpower, and I definitely want to cover that in a future episode. Smash Wolf asks if it's possible to create real-life Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Totally it is, and I have to do that episode. We are making an army of Ninja Turtles tomorrow.